here at the 20th Century Fox studio on the set of MASH talking to actor Alan Alda about the problems of male and female roles and relationships in the United States today. Mr. Alda, from your work and from various interviews, it is apparent that you are sympathetic to the women's movement. How did you get this way? I have always been sympathetic to the women's movement. I've always, I was sympathetic to the women's movement before there was uh, this current wave of popularity for the movement. Uh, I've always thought of myself as a feminist, even as a child. thought that it was foolish and wrong to treat women differently from men. When I was 10 and 11 years old, mm -hmm. being taught by my mother to open doors for women and light cigarettes for them, and I yeah. thought that that was, um, in, so, in, a, in a very subtle way, I thought that, that, it, that it was uh, um, insulting to women. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never could make anybody understand that. I couldn't define it in words mm -hmm. at the time. But I, I understood that it was in some way making women, uh, putting women in an inferior position instead of, uh, instead of treating them as equals. And I, and I, I never really uh, did it. I, for years, I would let women stand at doors <laughs> <laughs> waiting to be let in. Unless, Unless I saw that they really would fall apart if they didn't get that kind of attention that they had been brought up to expect. There's no, there's no sense in being um, destructive to people that they don't understand what you're doing. But I, uh, I, never, I never thought it was a, a friendly gesture. How would you describe women's situation today in this country? Well, I think that there's a, there's a, a, a rise in consciousness. I think mm -hmm. that everybody, male and female, is beginning to understand mm -hmm that we're people together, so that women are benefiting from that, and I think men are benefiting from it. What do you think the advantages for men would be if the women's movement succeeds? I think of feminism as a, 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 a humanism. I think it's a human mm -hmm. movement, mm -hmm. and, um, and everybody will benefit. I think men will benefit in a number of very concrete ways. Men are now forced to... Uh, to conform to a male stereotype, which is exactly. very destructive to men. Um, they think of themselves as the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. They feel that they have to think of themselves as a the breadwinner. They have to go out and work at jobs that sometimes they don't really enjoy, just so they can keep the woman at home chained mm -hmm. to the stove. If some men are better mm -hmm. in the house or at, at raising children than mm -hmm. some women are. And I'm sure there are some marriages where things would probably work out better all the way around if the, if the woman were spending most of her time earning most of the money. But most men are not allowed to enjoy a situation like that. They feel guilty. They feel driven. Mm -hmm. uh, they should be released from that to a certain extent. They should be free to do what they want to do, to realize their own potentials, just as women should be able to realize their own potentials. Another very important benefit that men would, would realize, I think, would be the... Um, the ability to express the soft side of themselves. We've been trained not to, uh, not to cry, not to express emotion. In fact, often to deny emotion to such an extent that we don't even know what we're feeling sometimes. I think that uh, uh, my personal experience, for instance, as an actor, uh, having to be, cl be close to my emotions has been a very, uh, very good thing for me. I think it's something that would be good for all men to go through to feel free to cry. I cry a lot. I cry when I hear um, any song from Fiddler on the Roof. I have to pull the car over to the side of the road so I can cry if, if it comes on the car radio. Uh, I cry easily uh, when I see uh, children uh, uh, marching in a school pageant. It's just, I'm touched easily by, uh, by things like that. And uh, uh, when I see people helping other people, it, it uh, brings tears to my eyes very often. But I, a lot of men are not free to do that. I don't mean to set myself apart and above from other men. I just I think that's that's a kind of experience that the the rise of a humanist movement like the feminist movement would would free us for. Another very important benefit would be that we would be able to share a life with women earlier. Uh, women are segregated from men at an early age in our society and they are continued to, to, to be segregated throughout life because they're not allowed into certain jobs. Well, if we were allowed to play and work alongside of women from the time we were kids, we would find out that they're people just like us, that they're not strange beings from another planet. Isn't it, isn't it crazy to bring up 
kids segregated like that and then at the last minute throw them together into marriage and say now you're supposed to learn how to cooperate and do something that you've never done before which is bring up kids and do it together and share the experience well they don't know who each other are they can't they can't place the other person they, they men think that women are irrational creatures women think that men are uh, driven by some strange ego needs and in, in some cases by virtue of that segregation those stereotypes fit because they've also been trained into those stereotypes there's a fourth way that men will benefit and that will be by being allowed to do things that up until now have only been um, activities reserved for women for instance uh, men are trained that they're not supposed to cook they're not supposed to sew uh, they're not supposed to have uh, artistic impulses uh, and they're not supposed to carry them out if they do very frequently it's supposed to be masculine not to uh, not to have a sense of color or to uh, to dress uh, in a way which is uh, which expresses uh, yourself let's say and uh, and it's it's uh, silly to me that men are denied uh, expressions like that certainly to be able to to be creative and do creative things to know how to clean your own mess in a house seems to me to be something that uh, uh, men are, uh, are, are doing a great d uh, injustice to themselves uh, not knowing it's important for a man to know how to clean that part of the house that he dirties there are a fifth way that men are missing out is being denied the chance to bring up children uh, by virtue of the male stereotype it, it's considered uh, by judges and the rest of society alike that that men are not supposed to be the parent mm -hmm. to whom children should go in a divorce and even in a marriage there the men are not considered to be the the parent that the children are to look to for for succor and for guidance and uh, training we really do consider that the woman brings up the children i think it's bad for the children it's bad for the woman and it's bad for the man because if it's such a great thing to run a house and bring up a family then how come we're not having part of it television constantly reinforces the stereotyping especially for women yeah. how do you think we can best go about getting a more accurate and better portrayal of women in television and film i think that the culture has to change a little bit mm -hmm. before that'll happen i think that uh, television especially television commercials reflect the view that women hold of themselves around the country to a great extent i think that uh, on a person-to-person -person basis that view will change uh, m more than it will change uh, by trying to affect television itself. Uh, we, we stuck with the following problem. Mm -hmm. Television commercials, for instance, which is a, the most uh, awful version of women that we mm -hmm. get, are the way they are because women buy the products that those commercials mm -hmm. advertise. And they buy those products presumably because they respond to that vision of women. Uh, they don't find it insulting. They don't find it... Um, uncomfortable making mm -hmm. if they did they would turn away from the products if, if there's any truth at all to the advertising uh, rationale mm -hmm. uh, they test those commercials in markets and the only reason they put them on nationally is because they find that that women respond to them and then they stay on because women continue to respond to them I'm talking about the soap ads and all right. the, those, the stupid commercials where mm -hmm. the women are supposed to be happy because their chrome gleams or because they've made coffee that some schnooky husband likes you know and not because they like it but but I I think if we can reach people mm -hmm. and have them think of themselves as people and not as appendages of the kitchen and, and other you know other mm -hmm. appliances in that room mm -hmm. Uh, those commercials will have to change because women won't, won't buy those products anymore. And I think that as long as it's as long as we have um, commercial television existing the way it does, it'll probably tend to reflect what we are more than it does what we could be. How do you think that the television and motion picture industries can have a role in in uh, helping the women's movement? Uh, it's a male-dominated and yeah. prejudiced toward a male point of view. I think two things have to happen. I think women have to. Um, strike out for themselves. They mm -hmm. have to say, "You can't do that to me," and mm -hmm. they have to not be afraid mm -hmm. to uh, to speak up for themselves, uh, not be afraid to take the the backlash that that they get from it. Mm -hmm. um, and men who think they care have to realize that 
that they're collaborating in a conspiracy of silence if they don't do something about it. Uh, that's one of the reasons I try to talk as much as I can in public about it, because I think that men seem, too many men who are otherwise sensitive people mm -hmm think that the women's movement is a is a woman's problem and it's mm -hmm. not it's a, it's shared by everybody mm -hmm. and we all suffer from it uh, we all suffer from the the exploitation of women and it's only men and women working together that will really change it because the men have the control now and I, I benefit in a short-term way by being a man at the moment and it's only by by uh, pitching in and helping out that um, that will change it and make it beneficial to everybody in the long run. Um, how would you um, explain the contemporary demise of good scripts and good roles for women? I wonder if there ever was a time when it was really well, terrific for women. Uh, women. Wasn't it better? I mean, what I'm referring to is in, in the 30s, the Joan Crawfords and the Betty Davises. Yeah. And well, that's, I suppose that's true. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's odd that at a time when... when uh, there's a new consciousness that women should that there shouldn't be terrific roles for women where women are uh, people and strong people I don't know I can't explain it it may, may it may be a, uh, a last-ditch effort to, to maintain uh, mm -hmm. things the way they were on the part of the men well, also also there's a there's a um, the, the the industry mm -hmm. the movies anyway are in, a, are in, a, are in bad trouble mm -hmm. and they're really not interested in um, in much else other than uh, r rape and caper movies and uh, mm -hmm. films that either actually exploit women or ignore women entirely. There's a, mm -hmm. You can make money nowadays with a movie that has two or three men um, f uh, slugging it out together. Mm -hmm. uh, I suppose in a way it's, uh, it's back to the old... Uh, Thing of uh, boxing matches, you know. I mean that that kind of the, the same kind of appeal. You endorse the Equal Rights Amendment. Yeah, I went to Chicago a couple of months ago to try to help the Equal Rights Amendment get passed in uh, Illinois, mm -hmm. and about um, two or three weeks later, it was defeated there for the second time, I think, second or third time. As a matter of fact, that's what I wanted to say next was that uh, I think that the Equal Rights Amendment is, is uh, the minimum basic requirement for. Uh, living in a democracy uh, you, you have to have all of the citizens have equal opportunities under the law and if it if in your state I, I don't I, I don't have all the states memorized in which has been passed which are by now thir about 37 states uh, it only needs about seven more for ratification to become a part of the Constitution and uh, anybody who thinks they care about uh, equal rights uh, had better get behind that amendment because it's it it doesn't mean an awful lot but as long as we don't have it it means a lot you think that the women's movement can best get through to men i think probably through other men i think a lot of men are so turned off to uh, to uh, women that uh, uh, they're not ready to listen mm -hmm. to other to, to women seriously to, to other people who happen to be women um, some people are close enough sensitive enough to be able to listen to women um, but others aren't and I think that uh, men who think they care have to, have to not be quiet about it they have to uh, um, talk up how, how do you think that we can get through to all people what do you foresee as having to be done I don't know I, I think that uh, um, a movement finds its own direction um, almost unconsciously mm -hmm. and, it w and everybody has a place in it there's always a vanguard in every new movement, which is boisterous and uh, um, and tasteless. Mm -hmm. The American Revolution had its own tasteless vanguard. There's also a, a middle group and a, and a conservative group at the end who, who change late and slow, and not very much. But uh, wherever your taste, your sense of style leads you to serve, there's a place for everybody in this movement, and everybody can help raise the consciousness of the country so we can treat each other like people because this is not just for women this is for everybody male and female black and white mexican caucasian uh, oriental uh, everybody everybody 
children too. Everybody will be benefited when we treat each other more like people.